Hello, I am glad you're here. This is Jenna from McGuire. Today I'm sharing with you a fun pop-out window card design. I haven't made one of these in a long time, and I thought it was time to share one in a video. Now the great thing about this technique is you create a fun kind of interactive card that pops up and open in a fun way. And you don't need any specialty dies. This works great with a lot of dies you probably have on hand, including basic shapes such as rectangles, circles, ovals, squares, and more. I have three different ideas for you. I encourage you to watch all three because I share more ways to do the technique. And at the end, I also wanted to show you something really cool that I hope to use in the future. So let's get started. I thought we would start with this simple card design that has a rectangle window pop out. What's really cool about this design is that you see the main element when the card is closed. And when you open the card, that main element swivels and pops up so you see it when it's open too. Now this is a pretty basic design we're starting with. and You could use this with a basic rectangle die set. I'll be doing a lot of gluing together of die cuts today and I wanted to mention the glue I'm using because I know I'll get some questions. Normally I use this Gina K Connect liquid adhesive. This is the bottle that it's come in for a long time now. Well they recently improved the formula so that it doesn't freeze when shipping and they came out with a larger bottle. Now this one has a slightly wider tip to it but it comes out very easily so if you have issues with your hands this is a great option. Gina also came out with fine tip bottles and there are three in a pack and you can transfer the glue from the large bottle into this if you'd like a fine tip option. I've used fine tip bottles in the past. They work great, but this one's particularly good because it's not so fine that it gets clogged. I think it's just the right amount and the glue kind of sucks back down when you let go of the pressure. So I'm not finding any issues of clogging. So you can easily transfer some glue into that bottle. You could use other glues if you want. Put on the top and then there is the little uh, cap that's hooked to it that you can use to make sure that it doesn't dry out. I like this because I don't have to worry about it getting clogged and I can easily put the cap back on. So you'll see me use different adhesives in videos, but this one is an option that I'm trying out right now and so far I'm really happy with it. Okay, so now let me show you the dies that I use to create these first set of cards. This is from Concord and Ninth, and it's called I Love You More Than. In the die set, you have layering pieces for ice cream, a pillow with some Z's, a coffee cup, flowers, pizza, taco, and french fries. There is also a scalloped rectangle die that is sized just perfect for all of these elements. There is a stamp set of the same name that allows you to stamp things like I love you more than and then you can put pizza underneath it with the pizza die cut or stamp pizza or both. So this is a small set with a great price point and these work really well together. So I'll be using all of the die cuts and all of these stamps for today's examples. Now these are all very easy to assemble. The dies are pretty self-explanatory. I do like to double up my die cuts, so everything is a couple die cuts thick because I like that dimension. But there's absolutely no need to do that if you don't want to. You can save dimension and time by using one layer. I'm going to skip gluing all of the die cuts together because it's easy to figure out, as I mentioned, and also I want to focus on the pop-out window design instead. But I will show you all the layered die cuts a little bit later. After I assembled all the die cuts, let's create the front of our card, that red piece with the faux stitched hearts. To do that faux stitching, I use the Concord and Ninth stitched hearts die. This is a new one. I love it because you can put faux stitching on the front of a note card and it doesn't have the outside cutting edge. So it's easy just to do on the front of a card to add some interest. This will definitely be on my favorites list this year. Next I have a piece of red cardstock that is about five and a quarter by four inches. And I'm using a rectangle die to cut right from the center of that. Any rectangle die will work. I'm using one from Waffle Flower. You could do absolutely any size here. You could do square, rectangle, circle, heart, whatever you want. I will show you other window examples or shapes later in this video. Okay, so now I'm running this through my die cut machine. Any die cut machine should work. And we have a rectangle window in our red panel. Next, I wanted to add the faux stitched hearts. So I'm taping the rectangle onto that die and running it through my die cut machine. Again, this doesn't cut anything, it just does the faux pattern. 
Now I thought I'd enhance that, make it stand out even more by running it through my die cut machine with my embossing pad. This will kind of press that faux stitching into it and make it stand out even more. Most die cut machines come with some sort of embossing mat so you can do this where you make an impression and I recommend doing it with any of your faux pierced or faux stitching background dies. Next I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch side folding note card and I am just placing that red rectangle right on the front, not gluing it, just holding it there and then putting that same rectangle die right in place. It just pops in place. I'm tracing the inside of that die with a pencil. Then I will remove the red rectangle, line up our rectangle die with the pencil line that I did, and tape it in place. I'll then open up the note card and run it through. And this will give me a rectangle window in the same position on the front of a white note card. There are many ways to do that, but this made the most sense to me at the time. Now I'm putting glue on the back of that red rectangle and adding it to the front of our card. Next, we can create that folded pop-out piece on the inside. This is super easy. You can use any cardstock for this, but I do recommend kind of a lighter weight, maybe an 80 pound. But if you only have heavier weight, that's fine too. You need a piece that is six and a quarter inches wide and five and a half inches tall. You'll do two score lines, one at two inches and one at four inches. Now you could make this not as tall if you wanted to. You can play around with it, but I find this is a good basic size for this technique and it works every time. Now I'll accordion fold that and reinforce those score lines. And there we have our inside fold out piece. Now you'll notice the back flap is a little bit wider than the others, that's okay. Now on that bigger back flap, that bigger one on the back there, see how it sticks out a little bit? On the back of that flap, I'm putting some strong adhesive. I recommend a double-sided tape. I like to put one along the edge and then one right up against that score line. You could use liquid adhesive here, but make sure you use something strong and that you really give it time to dry before moving on. So now we can remove the release paper and I'll put this flap right up against the inside edge of our card. Now this again is 80 pound and my card itself on the outside is 110 pound. I like that to be a little bit stronger, but again, you could use whatever weight card stocks you have. Now we need to adhere the rest of this flap so it's not just kind of sticking out there. To do so, I like to create little hinges. Now it doesn't really matter the size of the hinges, but what I like to do is cut a piece that is three by one and a quarter inches. And I score that right down the middle. You can be flexible on the size here, it really doesn't matter, but basically you're creating hinges. Now I'm creating one hinge here, but I'll cut it in half in a moment, so I'll have two. I'm putting strong double-sided adhesive on both sides of this hinge. I'm using a pretty generous amount because I want this to stay put. I do recommend using tape here, it's just a lot easier. So now I can cut this in half. So I'm just gonna fold that hinge and cut it in half. It was just faster to put the tape on one big piece and then cut it in half, but you could start with two if you prefer. Okay, so I'll remove the release paper from one side of one of the hinges. I'll now take the flap on our card that's still hanging there. See that piece hanging there? I'm just gonna fold it all the way over. So watch me just take it and fold it all the way down. And now I'll take this hinge and glue it right to the top corner, making sure the crease of the hinge is lined up with the edge of that white cardstock flap. So now we have this little hinge sticking out there. It looks kind of funny, but I promise you won't see it in a moment. Next, I'll do the same thing on the bottom of that flap. So I remove the release paper from one side of the hinge and put that hinge towards the bottom, making sure the crease of the hinge lines up with the edge of the flap. Okay, we're in the final stage here. We're we'll just remove the release paper from the other sides of the hinges. So just pop off all those release paper pieces. Then I will press this down, folding along the flap that's hanging there. So watch, I'll just flatten this down, lay everything flat. You see the adhesive is facing up towards the camera on both of those hinges. And then I close the card into that adhesive. And there we have the pop out feature on the inside. This works with whatever size opening you have on the front. Okay, so now it's time to add the little element that will pop that you see on the front of the card and when the card is open. I used the scalp rectangle die from the Concord and Ninth set along with the dies and stamps to do the pizza greeting. 
Now I am gluing that white scalloped rectangle onto black cardstock. I just thought it'd be fun to have a thin black cardstock mat behind it so that it has a little bit of definition and stands out more. We want to adhere this element to that pop-up feature through the window. So I put a piece of tape on the pop-up feature right along the edge of it, just peeking through that window. And then I'm also putting double-sided tape on the back right-hand side of our pop-up element. There are a few ways to do this. This is what seemed to work best for me. Now I'll remove the release paper and I will press this element right down into that window, making sure that it's centered. I designed this particular card so there was a little see-through frame area around the black trim that you can kind of see through to the inside, but I'll show you later how to fill it so you don't have that see-through space if you don't want it. Here's a look at the completed card. There's not too much bulk to it, and when you open it, that front element pops up and kind of turns so you can see it when the card is closed or opened. I also stamped a little greeting on the inside and added a few extra pepperoni hearts and left plenty of room to write a personal message. However, you could decorate that inside however you want. You could stamp on it. You could add um, pattern paper, anything. I like keeping the inside simple. Here's a closer look at the faux stitch tarts and that layered pizza die cut, which I think is the cutest thing ever. If you know me, I love pizza. I also love french fries and I also love naps, so I'll be using this set quite a bit. Now you can see there's that little opening again around that, so you can see the inside of the card. You don't have to have that there. You could have instead used that red piece we die cut out and have that be that element that pops up which you'll see later in this video. But I thought having that little see-through area was kind of fun. I did the same card design for a taco version. Now you'll see some yellow and red in my taco lettuce. I created those little yellow and red bits using the sprinkles die cut that is included in the set for the top of your ice cream. So I used little sprinkles to add some color to the taco. Then I also made a third version of this card using the french fry die cuts because it's super cute and french, french fries are my absolute favorite thing. Now I do have my leftover panels that I'm going to save for different card design in the future. So we have I love you more than naps, I love you more than coffee, flowers, and ice cream. And you can see on the ice cream how there's the little sprinkles on top. That's what I used to add green peppers to my pizza and cheese and tomatoes to my tacos. So these were all really easy to put together, really fun, playful, great to send to a friend or to share with kiddos. My next two card designs use these balloons from Concord and Ninth. It's a new die set called Up and Away. You, know, you get all the dies that you see here, which allows you to create a really large heart balloon, a large regular balloon, and then a smaller balloon. And then lots of elements to decorate those. There are also clouds, the words hay, little tiny elements that allow you to create little banners or flags hanging off the hot air balloons, many ways you can use them. I'll use the smaller balloons on this card, and I'll use the big balloon on the next card. There's also the coordinating up and away stamp set, which really works well with it. You've got the sun that you can use with it, the big hugs there, and lots of sentiments that fit inside the heart die cut. I think this set alone would be great for a simple card. I thought I'd also show you, see that big hugs greeting? You can also get that style in a huge die. Look at this, it's the big hugs die. It comes with the words and then a shadow for it. And look how it fills a card so nicely. I'm not using that for today's example. However, I'll be using it in the future and it'll be on my favorites list. So I wanted to show that to you since it coordinates well with the products I am using. Let's start with this card. I'm gonna show you the completed version of it first. You can see there's not too much bulk to it. It has an oval pop-up window. And I positioned die cuts on it so you can see them when the card is opened or closed, which really adds to that pop-up feel. I also added a bit more to the inside of this one to create a scene, but I did leave a little spot there to write my personal message. So the window on this one is an oval. Last time I did a rectangle. And this time I have die cuts hanging off that oval. Really easy to do and a great way to stretch the supplies you have. I assembled three different small balloons for this card. I did a peach, a pink, and a green. Now assembling these is very easy because all the dies are included in the set and I just die cut them and glued them together. There are lots of other accessory dies for this. The only one that I ended up using is the clouds for the background. But keep in mind, there's a lot in there. 
Next, I'll create the front of the card. This is a pool colored panel that is five and a half by four and a quarter. And I have a Hero Arts oval die that I'm placing right in the center. You could use a smaller die if you prefer. I wanted a big window so I had room for my balloons. I also created a side folding note card that ends up being four and a quarter by five and a half inches. By the way, this is Concord and Ninth Aqua Sky cardstock, which is a beautiful color. Now I'm holding the oval frame on the front of our card, popping the oval die in place, and then tracing on the inside. I then can remove that frame from the front, tape the oval die right up against the pencil line, open up the card, and run it through my die cut machine. Now my oval is in the same place on both pieces. Next, we can create the pop-up feature for the inside. As before, I have a piece of cardstock that is six and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall, and I'm scoring at two inches and four inches, exactly like we did before. I'll accordion fold along those score lines, and I end up with this Z piece where the back flap is a little bit wider than the others. On that bigger back flap, we'll put our strong double-sided adhesive. I'm using Lawn Fawn today, but you could use whatever you prefer. I don't recommend tape runner unless your tape runner is super strong. Now I'm taping that flap right up against the inside edge of the note card. Now we can create our hinges. I have a piece of cardstock that's three inches by about one and a quarter, maybe one and a half, it really doesn't matter. I folded it in half and I'm putting adhesive on both sides of the hinge. This hinge is much wider than I need so I can cut it into smaller pieces. Again, it's easier to put the tape on the back of one piece and then cut it down than to put the tape on the back of each of the individual pieces. Now we can take the flap on the inside of the card, lay it flat, glue one hinge right up against the edge of the flap so the crease of the hinge is up against the edge of the flap. And we'll do one at the top and one at the bottom. This is exactly what we did before, just showing the process again. Now we can remove the release paper from the two hinges and then I will fold the pop-up along that center fold line and close the card onto the exposed adhesive. So I'll lay the hinges down so the adhesive's facing up, close the card onto it, and there we have the pop-up window. Very easy to do. Again, you can do this with a variety of size window die cuts on the front. Before we did rectangle, now we're doing oval. I did use the faux stitched heart background die on our oval frame. So you can see that faux stitching on that bottom left piece there. And I'll just glue that right onto the front of the card. I do like doubling up the front of this card so it's stronger. It just really makes for a nice pop-up fold card, but you could do a single layer card as long as your card stock is heavyweight, which I'll show you in my next example. But I do like to double it up here like I did on this one and our last one. Now the pop-up element on this card is an oval that I cut from white cardstock. I used the same oval die for my pop-up element as I did for the window. So this white oval will fit right inside of this window. I put adhesive on the flap inside of the window so I can remove that release paper and press the white oval onto it. You'll see it fits in like a puzzle piece. Before I left a little trim so you could see around it, this time I'm filling it completely. So it really doesn't matter as long as it's the same size or smaller. And there you can see how this card opens. Next, I added my balloons. I decided to put the pink balloon so it's attached to the white oval only. That way when the card opens, this one will move along with it. Just always test your folding. Make sure that whatever you glue down will still let you open the card. So I'm gluing this peach one just to the blue frame only. I'm gonna open it and make sure it's okay. Yes, it just swings through there. So this is only glued to the blue frame. So when you open it, you'll see the other side of the balloon there. So I die cut another peach balloon and assembled it and I'm gluing it to the inside. So it looks pretty when the card is open or when the card is closed. It is really fun to create a scene on this card that changes when the card is open and closed. Really fun to do and you could change this up in so many ways. Now I did add white heat emboss sentiments to die cut hearts to each of the balloons and those are from this coordinating stamp set. I also used the cloud dies to create white clouds that I glued in various places on the card. I created holographic heart little accents to glue here and there and those were actually created using the pizza element. Remember the pepperonis that were heart shape? I created little holographic hearts with that die to scatter on the background. 
So sometimes I add gems. Sometimes I like to create my own holographic small die cuts because they sparkle great and have less bulk to them. On the completed card, you can see those holographic hearts and how they catch the light nicely. And this card, when you open it up, you see the two balloons from the front and I added a green balloon over there on the right. There's room in the center there to write a personal message. So you could create whatever you've seen you want on the inside and you could stamp any additional greetings if you want to. I really like this die set and the last one because you can really easily assemble dimensional die cuts. I enjoy that process. If you prefer stamping, you could do stamped and die cut images here or stamp something and cut it out and use that for the pop-up elements. So the sky is really the limit with this technique. You just need some sort of die to create a window on the front. That's the trick of this and it doesn't require anything special. Okay, my last card actually has a shaped window on the front. So before I used oval and rectangle, this time I used the hot air balloon to create the window for the pop out feature. Now this uses the same dies that I used on my last example, just a different style. I have a side folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, and I'm using the faux stitched heart die on the front of it just to add some texture. This time I'm not gluing like a frame on the front, I'm just cutting the window into the front of the card itself. Okay, so I ran this through my die cut machine to get that heart pattern, and I also assembled a large hot air balloon using the die set I showed you earlier. You can see the assembled die cut here. Now I'm taking the large hot air balloon die and creating a window in the front of the card. I want my hair, hot air balloon to be right about there, so I'm placing the die in the same place. I'll make sure it's all lined up centered. I'll tape it down and then run it through my die cut machine to create the window itself. Now this will only be the balloon portion. After we run this through, we'll have to cut the basket portion too. So now the window on the front of our card fits that hot air balloon perfectly. So you could do this with a flower and a leaf, a heart, whatever you want. I do feel like it works best with symmetrical dies. Now we have our inside piece. It's six and a quarter by five and a half inches tall. We did our score lines at two and four inches, just like I've done on my other two examples. On the back of the larger flap, I'm putting my double-sided adhesive and I'll glue this into the inside edge of our card. You'll notice I use that heart faux stitch die on the inside of our card, not thinking that I'm going to cover it up with this piece, so completely ignore that I did that. So here I'm putting this right up against the inside edge. Now I could have used that heart on this pop-up piece, but I decided not to. You could stamp on this, you could do whatever you want, but again, I usually keep my inside very simple. Here I'm creating my hinge piece. I made it wider than last time, so I have additional pieces for later. But I have two hinges here. Again, you can see it doesn't matter what size. But I'm gluing one against the back of the flap up at the top, and then once on the back of the flap at the bottom, just like we did before. I'll fold the flap down, remove the release paper, and then press the front of the card down onto that exposed adhesive. So here we'll press the flap down so the exposed adhesive is facing up towards the camera and then we'll close the card onto it. This is the easiest way to do this feature and it works with whatever shape you're using there on the front. I'm putting adhesive on the back of my die cut but only on the right hand side so that I can glue it right into the window onto the flap that's on the inside and I'll hold that there while it dries. You could use double-sided adhesive if you don't want to wait for it to dry, but with liquid adhesive, you'll want to hold it there. Now I'm adding some balloon die cuts here and there, but making sure that I'm not hindering the balloon from moving as the card opens. I also added some holographic hearts here and there on the front, and I die cut the sentiment hay from black cardstock, and that's included in the balloon die set. On the inside, I added some more cloud die cuts, holographic heart die cuts, and a small black sentiment. I'll show you what that's from in a moment. You can see how this opens just like the others, but this time we have a shaped die. The balloon lines up great with the balloon die cut that we have that moves as you open the card. Here's a closer look at all the faux stitching on it, which I just love that detail, and those holographic hearts which catch the light. 
The stamp sentiment on the inside that says, have the loveliest day, is from this new Concord and Ninth background stamp. This is a turnabout stamp called Sweethearts. So this allows you to create a colorful background, but there are also great little sentiments included in it. Now this is how the turnabout works. You stamp it once in one color, rotate it and stamp it in another color, and do that four times to create a colorful background. I've used turnabouts many times in videos. I will link to an example up here on the top right if you want to see one in action. I didn't actually use the turnabout today, but I did use that little sentiment. Before we go, I wanted to show you another new die set from Concord and Knight that I think is brilliant. Lila requested that I wait to use this with her, so I didn't use it in today's video, but it's called the Happy Heart Box Die Set. If you like making little boxes and such with your crafty supplies, check out these cute boxes you can make with that die set. They're heart-shaped and you can put little gifts or candies or whatever inside. Uh, Concord and Knight said I could share this image. I will link to their website where you can watch a video on how easy it is to assemble them with this die. So stay tuned. Lila and I'll be using this and I'll probably show the results over on Instagram so you can check that out. All right, I hope you give this idea of using your dies to create pop-out window cards a try. It's a great way to get new looks and create a card that is unique. If you're interested in the supplies that I featured, I always link it below in my YouTube description. And also go over to my blog because you can bookmark these cards or this video so you can refer back to it in the future. I thank you for spending this time with me in the end here. I have a couple other related videos for you. We'll see you again soon in another video. Take care and stay healthy.